Today we will be looking into where you can find a turbocharger in the engine bay and possibly how to replace the turbocharger when needed. The turbocharger is designed to last the lifetime of the vehicle. Normally you would not have to replace the turbocharger, but you can think of numerous scenarios where it's inevitable that the turbocharger needs to be replaced due to a turbocharger failure or a subcomponent failure. In this specific engine, the turbocharger is located in the back of the engine bay, on the back of the engine. The reason for the customer to do it like this is because the exhaust pipe needs to go to the back of the car anyway. Therefore, it makes more sense from packaging point of view to design it that the turbocharger is on the back of the engine bay. So for this engine, you can also see two specific nice features. The first one, you can see three cylindrical shapes in the intake hose of the turbocharger. You don't see any connections to these three cylinders, so you may wonder why they are there. The reason actually is quite simple. These are Helmholtz sound dampers. This means that the noise created by the turbocharger sucking in air is partially dampened out because of the construction of the size of these dampers. The second feature on this car is a water to air intercooler. Every turbocharged engine needs an intercooler, but there are two variants. We have this water to air intercooler, but there is also a air to air intercooler, which is more common. A water to air intercooler is generally more efficient but it also adds some complexity and cost to the entire system. This is the view of the turbocharger from underneath the car. On the right side, you can see the turbine side of the turbocharger. The turbine gets the exhaust gas from the engine and you can see it flows to the back of the car through the exhaust pipe. On the left side, you can see the compressor side of the turbocharger. The compressor provides the fresh air to the engine. Here we have a similar engine that we saw in the vehicle, but taken out. As you can see, the turbocharger is in the back of the engine as it was in the vehicle. The supplied air from the turbocharger goes through the black pipe towards the water to air intercooler. And after it has been cooled down, the air goes into the engine through these four intake ports. Before we can take off a turbocharger, several components need to be removed. Let's start by removing the compressor inlet pipe. This is where normally the air goes into the turbocharger. Next step would be to take off the compressor outlet piping. As mentioned before, this pipe takes the pressurized air from the turbocharger to the intercooler. After that, we can take off the PCV pipe. This pipe is the pipe that connects to the crankcase ventilation and needs to be rerouted into the compressor cover due to legislation. In this same step, we can also take off the e-actuator connector. The e-actuator is connected to the wastegate system of the turbocharger to control turbocharger speed and boost. Next step is to take off the water inlet and outlet piping. Water cooling is necessary for most turbochargers to cool down the inner components. A gasoline turbocharger normally operates at a higher temperature than a diesel turbocharger. That's why you will see these water connections on most gasoline turbochargers, but not on all diesel turbochargers. Next step would be to take off the oil inlet and outlet piping. Oil is vital for correct functioning of the turbocharger because it lubricates the bearing system. Without lubrication, the bearing system would fail within a very short time. The oil inlet connection is always on top of the turbocharger and is always pressurized. The oil drain is a larger diameter and is always drained by gravity. And the oil will always go back into the engine block. Final step to be able to remove the turbocharger is to remove the bolts that hold the turbine housing onto the engine. Simply loosen the bolts and the turbocharger can be taken off. With everything taken off, we can reassemble with a new turbocharger. As you can see, a new turbocharger will always come with caps and plugs installed. This is done to prevent any dirt, moisture or anything else from entering the turbocharger. Before installing the new turbocharger, make sure you replace the gasket with a new one. Failing to do so could cause problems with gas leakage down the line. When the turbocharger is installed, secure them by installing the nuts and torque these to a specific torque value. These kind of torque values will always be mentioned in the workplace manual supplied by the customer. Next step would be to reinstall the oil lines. Simply plug the lines back in and secure them with the bolts provided. Again, torque these bolts to this correct specification.
We can now move back to the compressor core. The outlet pipe can be reconnected on the intercooler side and then on the compressor core side. Final step of reassembly is to reinstall the compressor inlet pipe and secure the bolts. Your reassembly has now been completed and you should be able to start the engine back up again.